Welcome to the basic spell coding code spells tutorial. I'm Nadia the Naja, and I'm going to be showing you how to make two different spells today. The two spells we're going to be making is a water spell that will move water away from you as you walk into it, and the other spell will be a stone spell that makes sand rise in a hexagonal pattern. It may seem a little boring, but it's the best way to teach you guys the basics of spell code. So to start with, you can just open the menu and go to your library. You are going to want to find the spell called Part Water by the Ancients. And you're going to make a copy of it. Then you're going to edit the spell and give it a good name that fits. Since this is going to be a water spell that parts it as you walk in it, how about Part Water on me or any other name you want the name doesn't affect how the spell works now we have the code from the other spell in here still so as it stands right now when the orb is created the orb will be moving at a medium speed and it will repel water away from you so it'll just move in a straight line away from you now if we want the orb to stay on ourselves, we need to keep it around us so a good way to do this is to use the orb movement properties. There isn't strictly one that keeps it on the player, I think. However, we could give it a very, very small radius of an orbit and keep it on the player using that. Now, if we set it to a distance zero and time for revolution zero, you'd think that would work. It would just hover in place. But, as I'm about to show you, it just moves in a line. Oh, there goes water. We'll go find that later. So, we need to give it an actual distance, but a very small distance. So, how about 0 0.0001? Which isn't very far, and we'll keep it orbiting around the player. We also need a similarly small revolution time, but this isn't as relevant. Um, how about a half a second? Part water on me. Let's see if this works. Well, the spell doesn't seem to have moved out of me, and as I walk into the water, it pushes it away. What a success. Let's find a bigger water to jump into. Ooh, lovely. Now, um, something I noticed when testing this spell is that the part water command the repel water command that is destroys water a little bit as well or it pushes it into the ground or something I'm sure they patch it at some point but if you're making some spells that need all the water to stay there you might have to wait for a patch although I'm not sure what you need that for let's give it a go look at me I'm Moses oh well uh, looks like it's time to start that second spell. Now, the second spell we're doing today is the hexagonal sand raising spell. This is going to be an edit of another one of the ancient spells, the hex spell that they've made. The hex spell doesn't strictly do anything, but it does form the hexagonal pattern, which I'll explain the coding behind it when I find a nice flat spot. How about here? Now, we can exit out of this spell. It should be saved wherever you had it and whatever you've named it. And we can go back to our library and find the hex. Now, if you're struggling to find a spell, which I seem to be right now, here it is. You can always search up at the top bar here. So if I typed in hex, nope, oh, that's a C. Hex, here's hex, and there's the me practicing earlier. You can ignore that. Now, you're going to want to copy this spell because you can't directly edit the ancient spells. I should have said that earlier. Copy it, edit it, and give it a relevant name. How about Sand Hex? What a name. Now, looking at this spell right now, when the orb is created, it will go at a medium speed, and it'll create a variable called I, which is just a letter, and it will be worth zero. Now, as long as i is less than six, 
it'll do these things. It'll increase i by 1, so i is now worth 1, and it will call this function after a quarter of a second. And that function just turns the orb left 60 degrees. Now, as it goes through this six times, as it counts up to six with this, it'll make a hexagon. And then it will probably just go in a straight line after this. So let's just look at what the spell does right now. Equip. And let's just shoot it into the distance. Forward, left. Oh, you can't see that very well, can you? How about now? Well, if you caught that, it just made a hexagon and flew off into the distance. Um, I should have found a place that wasn't yellow and I'm shooting yellow on it, but bear with me. Now, we want this to raise sand, so it seems easy enough. We're going to want the earth power lift sand. Now, where do we put this? If we start making it here, it won't have gone into the turning yet, but if we start it here, it might activate the lift sand function six times and would end up with a huge mess of sand. So I'm going to say we put it in here, because if it starts just before the hexagon, it won't really make a difference. It's only a quarter of a second. Now, um, there's one more thing that'll explain after I show this to you guys. There's a bit of a bug with the onCreate function. Not really much you can do about it right now. Let's take a look at our spell first. Let's make a hexagon out of sand right here. Hmm. Okay. Not much of a hexagon. It's kind of small. It just looks like a blob, and that's flying off into the distance, making a huge mess. A really, really huge mess. Okay, time to fix this spell. Now, first thing, we need this to be a bigger hexagon. So, what determines the sign length here? That'll be the delay after it calls the turn. So, let's double the size of the hexagon. How about we triple the size of the hexagon? So, let's just change this to 0.75 seconds. There we go. Okay, that should make the hexagon bigger. Oh, I'm falling. There we go. It's a better hexagon. The sand's a bit liquidy. Oh, and there's another huge mess. So, we are going to want that ball to disappear after we finish drawing this hexagon. Let's go back to editing. Now, here's the bug I'm about to show you guys with the onCreate command. When you say onCreate, it reads all of the commands and then does them. So it'll set the orb speed, create that, switch that on, it'll start doing this, and it'll destroy the orb. So normally in written code, it just reads it from top to bottom and does it at that. So it wouldn't even know destroy orb was coming up until it finishes this while loop. But in Blockly, it does. And I'm hoping they change that at some point. But there might be some uh, helpful way of having that in there. I haven't really experimented much with it, but um, it'll start. It'll call this function. It'll wait 75 seconds, but not 75, three quarters of a second. But by the time it's done that, it's already destroyed the orb. So let me demonstrate. Nothing happens because it instantly destroys the orb. Which is a bit of a problem if you want to get anything done. So, we can't have destroy orb in the onCreate thing. We're going to have to do something really weird. Go to functions. You're going to create another function. Just like this one. This function to turn. And you're going to put destroy orb in there. And we're going to call it destroy. Oh, destroy. It doesn't really matter where this is. It's just another chunk of code. Now, right now, this is never going to get switched on because nothing ever calls that function. So you're going to go up to control, and you're going to call function destroy. Did it again. After a delay of so many seconds. Now, we want this so many seconds to be after this function's done. So, what's six times three quarters? 
I could have given myself easier math here. Um, you guys have probably already done it by this point. Uh, three and... Oh, I need to get a calculator. Give me a second here. Oh, why can't I do math today? Well, let's just add it. Let's see, 0.75, that's going to be 1.5, and then it's going to be 3 is 4 of them, and then 3 plus, that's 4.5. I did know that. Oh. Anyway, after 4.5 seconds, it will destroy the orb. So we'll equip it. With any luck, it'll make our hexagon, and it'll destroy... Yeah, it destroyed when it got back to the start. Isn't that good? Now, um, that wasn't much of a hexagon, though. What if we wanted more sand? We'd want it to go around three times. An easiest way to do that would be to increase this to 18, because 6 would be one time around, so 18 would be three times around. Now, I'm sure someone's caught on to this. If it's destroying after four and a half seconds, it'll still only make one loop. So here I am, making myself struggle again. What's four and a half times three? Um, 12, 15 seconds. Oh, no. 12 and a half. No. 13 and a half, there we go. I think. Yes. Now, just like we just did, it'll go around. It'll count that up to 18 this time, though. And then after each 0.75 second turn, it'll go back through. And then once 13 and a half seconds passed up, this would finish. And since this timer started at the beginning of when it did on create, because just like when we just had the destroy orb function there, it started at the same time, after 13.5 seconds of the entire thing having switched on, it'll destroy the orb. One, two, there's a lot of sand, three, there we go, and that is the end of the basic spell coding tutorial. There's going to be another tutorial out soon for advanced spell coding where we start our own spell and we are going to cover how to share spells in the compendium with it. I hope you guys have a good time making spells and doing magic and making this lovely landscape as beautiful as you can with a mess of sand tripping down the mountains. <laughs>